today we're going to continue our look at Pedersoli's Queen Anne style flintlock pistol. Now hopefully you saw the earlier video I made on this pistol where I had it out the range and I was shooting. So I'm going to try not to duplicate uh, the same information I gave you on that video except where it absolutely has to be for the context to make sense. All right, let's um, let's bring you back into the shop for a minute, and I'm going to give you some technical information on this gun. I probably don't do that enough on the channel. So to lay the groundwork, this is a picture of an actual Queen Anne pistol, and uh, you know these pistols were very popular in the 18th century, and they have some very specific features to them. Uh, for one thing, the lock. The flintlock is not a separate unit. It's actually integral with the receiver portion of this pistol, which is quite different from most flintlocks. Also, you can see at the bottom of the picture, uh, that object is called a key. It's a specialized wrench. It goes over the barrel, and right under the barrel, there's a little lug that locks into that, and that's what's used to screw the barrel off for loading. So these are called turn barrel type pistols and you know here's here's what it looks like with the barrel off the uh, the powder and ball were loaded right into the receiver portion and you can see that cup the uh, cupped end uh, that is what the ball rested on and the powder was put in that little hole and then the barrel was screwed back on and the ball was then when it was fired, the ball was forced into the barrel through a tapered, uh, a tapered forcing cone. So it was a good tight fit. That is quite different from the Pedersoli picture, from the Pedersoli pistol. So here's Pedersoli's Queen Anne style pistol. And I call it Queen Anne style because it looks like a real Queen Anne pistol in, in some ways. Uh, but it's really just a surface impression. And this gun is actually a conventional flintlock pistol with a solid barrel. Uh, it's not a turn, turn barrel. So it's a solid 7.5 inch barrel. And it has a conventional separate flintlock. And we'll show you that in a little while. Um, so it's still a very interesting looking pistol. It's a lot of fun. And uh, let's, let's show you. Uh, a little more about it. As you know, it's a flintlock, uh, and you already know that it's not a turn barrel gun. This is a, a solid barrel all the way through. Now, so this gun has quite a tough trigger, and we'll just measure it here. Okay, so what do we got here for trigger pull? We have, let's see if you can get this so you can read it. We've got just over 15 pounds, like 15 and a quarter. Uh, oh, sorry, 14 and three quarters pounds trigger pull. Now that that is a heck of a trigger pull for a handgun. So you really do notice that, I have to tell you. Um, and it's probably a function of the springs. This gun is, is quite well built. I'm going to show you how it's put together because it's a little bit different. So if you're buying one of these, you should know that in order to disassemble it, the front screw right here is a, is a small wood screw. And that's because on a original Queen Anne type pistol, this lock plate is actually integral with the receiver part of the gun, the part that the barrel screws onto, and so is the trigger plate. Uh, but, but obviously on this, it had to be built like a conventional flintlock. So there was no way to get the bolt through here without it actually penetrating almost the middle of the barrel. Right? So they did a wood screw, and then there's a conventional lock bolt on this side. I'll just get that out. And then I can show you the lock. There we go. Okay, now the... 
I'll try to work this out. I've had it out a couple of times, and I'll tell you what, the inletting on this is very precise. Uh, hold on for one sec. Okay, get a little more light on the subject here so you can see the inletting is uh, quite, quite well done, very precise. So it's pretty tight to get the lock in and out. It's got a, a pretty large uh, touch hole. So I've had no ignition problems with this at all, as, as you'll see. I mean, it, it goes off every time. Uh, the lock is, is very small, very neatly shaped. Good pistol lock. The springs are incredibly robust. Uh, much stronger than they need to be. And if this was like an everyday shooter for me, I'd probably address that issue, particularly the trigger return spring, <coughs> which really does uh, contribute to that wicked, uh, wicked hard trigger pull that I showed you. Uh, and this, this frizzing spring... This is very stiff. I mean, it works every time. Then the frizzin does fly open when the uh, when the cock hits it. I don't want to. <laughs> I want to be careful here because you probably can't see that. But I've already taken a divot out of my thumb with this flint because flints are sharp. So I want to be careful when I lower this. But uh, anyway, very well built, good build quality. I'm not going to disassemble the whole thing. Let me put this back in, and I'll, I'll tell you a few other little things about it that you need to know if you're going to be shooting this. So just hold on. Okay, we got the lock back together now. So, you know, as I told you before, this is a smoothbore. And uh, it's nominally a 50 caliber, and, and in fact, it's pretty darn close. I, I mic'd the, the barrel, and I came up just a hair under 50 caliber. So, you will have seen me load this already at the range, and I loaded it with a bare ball and uh, a wad on top. I wouldn't mind trying this with a patch ball. Uh, the originals would have been shot with a bare ball, but as I said, they would have gone into the breech portion oversized and then been, uh, been swaged down in a forcing cone and had a very tight fit. I would like to try patch balls, but it's just not worth the effort to me. Uh, you would have to go with a, um, a .480 ball or even a .475 ball and a thin patch, like a, uh, a .010 patch, to be able to shoot a patch ball out of this. And it's a pretty odd size. You know, you'd probably be looking for a mold for it. And it's just not um, not worth the effort to me. It, it shoots pretty good, as you'll see, with bare ball. And uh, that's the way I'm going to do it. But if you want to patch it, get yourself a, a .48 or .475 uh, balls or, or mold and go for it. But that's what you're going to need uh, and a, a very thin patch. So... That's pretty much it. Got a uh, got a nice little butt butt cap on here in case <laughs> in case you need to whack a bad guy over the head with it after you fired your one shot. So uh, you know this is for me just kind of a fun gun. It's never going to be a target gun. I mean, it has no sights as I as I told you before because the turn barrel guns were impractical the sights. So it's a short range proposition. Uh, and naturally, I'm not using this for self-defense. But if you were to be in that case where you had to use it for self-defense, I recommend number two buckshot, as, as you'll see later. Uh, number two buckshot is quite effective in this thing. And if you had to protect your life with one of these, buckshot is definitely the way that I would go. So let's go back to the range and get to shooting. If you like this video or some of the other videos on the channel, by all means, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And, um, and if you would, go to Patreon and support the channel. 
so we can keep on bringing you the content that you enjoy. Thanks in advance. Have a great day.